What's up everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. Today we're going to be talking about a long awaited subject I think a lot of you out there have been wanting to hear from us and that subject is how to go out and chase trout in your kayak. It's going to be a super informative video so stick around today guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's do it. First things first, we're gonna talk about our kayaks, everybody. And any kayak works for kayak fishing. Whatever gets you out there, whatever floats your boat, no pun intended. And whatever gets you out on a body of water away from the bank so that you can use some of the techniques that we're gonna talk about today. But first and foremost, we're gonna talk about our kayaks. I am in love with my Old Town Kayak. Old Town Kayaks is one of our proud sponsors here at Addicted. They make a lot of different ones. They make a foot propulsion one, they make normal paddle kayaks, and they make them all the way down to just the bare bones, basic kayak that'll get you out there in the water, whatever fits your budget. But one thing I would highly recommend is saving up and trying to get this Autopilot series. The coolest part about it is it has this Minn Kota power drive trolling motor on the bow of it. And we power these with our Dakota lithium batteries. I gotta say, even if you have a different brand of kayak that has some sort of propulsion that is an electric motor, try and get one of these Dakota Lithium batteries. I've literally gone for a week at a time fishing every day in this thing and had it still be on full. So I'm extremely impressed with our Dakota Lithium batteries. But the 126 Autopilot is so sweet because it has the size, the durability to take a lot of gear out there with you. And it's very, very stable. A lot of times, as you'll see today, I barely sit down in my kayak when I'm out here fishing in the lake and allows me to fish so many different kinds of styles like you'll see here today. It has the spot lock technology, it has the true north technology, and it has a ton of options on the controller as you're out there in the lake, and it makes life so much easier. Again, check out Old Town's website. They have a lot of different models, again, from the foot propulsion, where you actually pedal the thing with your feet, to just the normal paddle kayaks, and then of course, these autopilot series in a couple different sizes. Okay, so now that we've covered our kayak options and the things that you're gonna need to use to get out on the water, I'm gonna talk about my three favorite methods to fish from a kayak. First method I'm gonna talk about, which is kind of the basis of the reason that you wanna get out on the water and in something like a kayak, is to troll. And one of my favorite methods to troll with is the Brad's Dodger setup and these mini kokanee cut plugs. Brad's Killer Fishing Gear makes some awesome, awesome trout fishing gear that is very effective for catching fish when you're out trolling in a boat like this. So first off, we're gonna talk about the rod you need for this. Really, any normal trout rod that you would use anyways from the bank is gonna work. I'm, a, I'm always in love with our Okuma Salilos. is another one of our proud sponsors here at Addicted, and I love Okuma rods, but anything in the length, size, and weight of these rods will work perfectly for you while you're out there. What I have here is an Okuma Salilo. This is a seven and a half foot rod with a four to 10 pound line rating. That seven and a half feet is perfect because it gets your rod tip out and away from the boat. It allows you to have a really nice bit of give and a soft tip to that rod tip so that when you are trolling, you can see the bite, one, and two, it allows that fish to be able to take the bait without feeling too much resistance from a super sturdy rod. For a reel on here, I have my C30 Kaimar, and this is perfect. You don't want really anything over a 30 series or a 3000 series reel on a, on a rod size this big because it's just too heavy. It'll add too much weight and it'll be too cumbersome on this rod setup. The line I have on here is a 20 pound Addicted Enforcer braided line. And this is a very high vis line that you see here. I love to have that high vis line in a situation like trolling because I can keep track of my line angles, I can see exactly where my rod tip is pointed, and I can make sure I'm having a good troll and keeping at a proper speed when I'm fishing techniques like these Dodgers. At the end of that 20 pound braided line, I've connected a monofilament bumper. And what a bumper is, is a piece of monofilament or four carbon line that I attach with any sort of uni knot. I use a blood knot to attach mine. You can even use a very small barrel swivel if you're not very good at tying those knots because it's gonna slide through your guides well and you don't need a ton of line. You just wanna separate that high vis line from your weight setup and from your dodger setup so that those fish aren't scared away from that high vis braided line. At the end of my monofilament bumper, which is about four to five feet of about 10 pound test, I'm gonna start with my Dodger setup. The way we do this is I add just a barrel swivel that slides up and down my main line. This is the line that's going to my reel, and this is my swivel that's sliding up and down that. I've attached a small piece of eight pound test to this that is a dropper, tie a little loop knot, and I use about a one to a two ounce lead at the bottom of that, and that's how I'm gonna get this Dodger setup to sink down below my boat. In between my sliding weight and my swivel, I've put a small size six bead, and that's so that I eliminate any line twists or any sort of abrasion from this swivel on my knot that I'm tying to my main swivel here. From there, I run about a foot and a half to a two foot bumper of about 10 to 15 pound test, because this line will not be scaring the fish. This is what you want so that if you do get snagged, you're not gonna break off your valuable dodger. So I have about two feet of 10 pound test down to my Brad's dodger. And these Brad's dodgers come with all this hardware that you see on it. So you basically just tie straight to that swivel, put your dodger on, and then connect your leaders right below that. 
Now these Dodgers come in a variety of colors. I like to make sure to at least have a couple. So I'll have like a bronze one, I'll have my colorful ones, I'll have my shiny silver ones, and I'll use each one of them throughout the day to see which one's gonna key in on the best bite from those fish. Now below my Dodger setup is my bread and butter, and that is my mini cut plug. I use about a one and a half to a two foot liter here again of about eight pound test. This is where I go lighter because I don't want the fish to see that line in between my Dodger and my little bait here. Again, these KCPs or these mini cut plugs come in so many different varieties of colors, but I like to stick with a good basis of color when I go out there. I have chartreuse, I have my pink, I have my shiny silver, and I have my golds. Kind of go through that range of the spectrum and make sure that I have each one, again, to match each sort of watercolor or each bite condition that I find in whatever body of water that I'm fishing. The beauty of these mini cut plugs is how they have these little rubber bands on the end and you can open them up and add any sort of bait that you want. You can see I have some old bait in here from last time. Looks like it might be a little piece of herring or something. But what I love to do is open these things up, either add scent to the foam pads that are in there that they actually come with stock or add some sort of bait inside of them which we'll talk more once we're out there on the water fishing. Below my cut plug I have just a small size 6 bead and a rubber bobber stop. These things you can find at just about any fishing store. They come on a little wire. They look like this here. And they slide right through your line onto your leader and you can slide them down just above the hook so that that bead is actually stopping and keeping that cut plug from falling all the way down onto your top hook. What I'm using here today is a double setup, a double hook setup, just to ensure that I actually get those fish because when this thing is spinning out there, it's throwing those hooks around and it really does help and it's much more productive to have two hooks on there. And these two hook setups you can actually buy in the store, you don't have to learn how to tie them themselves. But if you wanna learn how to tie a trailer hook setup, check out our rest of our tutorials here on Addicted Fishing and there's plenty of information on how to tie that double hook setup. All right, so that's our first setup. Let's hit the water and show you how to fish it. Okay everybody, we're out on the water and it's time to show you how to fish the Dodger. What I have here, it makes it a lot easier so you don't just have to lay your rod down in the boat, is these Yak Attack rod holders. I have these with a little extension model here. It's got like a six inch extension that I've added. Put this little rod holder on here. This works on fly rods and spinning rods. These things attach with these really cool little deals that come on the side of the Old Town kayaks. Put it on there, bam, you can move it, adjust it, shake it, groove it, whatever you want. All right, let's fish our Dodger. Okay, my first trick when I'm fishing these Dodgers, and one thing that I'd never leave home without usually is some shrimp. Whether you're using salad shrimp or, or just normal shrimp from the grocery store, or like I have here, some Millennial Coon shrimp, which is a really good buddy of ours here at Addicted Fishing, um, I like to have something stinky to put in there. Even times, if I don't have shrimp or I don't have anything, I'll put some power base and power eggs, whatever I need to inside that little, that little shell that, that these coconut cut plugs give you. That way I have some sort of scent in there, something attracting those fish other than the flashiness and the twirling of my bait. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna remove my little rubber. I'm gonna open that thing up just like so. I'm gonna grab one of these shrimp that I have here. I'm gonna take it apart a little bit to where I have just this nice big chunk of meat. I'm gonna lay that inside the shell. Squish it down, reapply my rubber, and we're ready to fish. There is a lot of time that the speed is the factor. So you wanna go up and down, whether you're paddling uh, or using your feet for propulsion or you're using this motor like this, you wanna be trying your speeds faster and slower throughout the day to see which one's gonna work better. So let's get this thing dropped down. First, I'm gonna start about, every every time I let the line out, it's gonna be about 10 feet. I'm gonna go, there's about 10 feet. And there's about another 10 feet. I'm gonna check to make sure I'm not hitting the bottom. There's bottom right there. I'm gonna reel that up just a couple of cranks, make sure I'm not all the way on the bottom, and then we're fishing. My second favorite setup that I like to use when out trolling on the lake is one that not a lot of people see, but is extremely effective for catching fish, and that is the Brad's Mini Wigglers. There's a lot of different kind of plugs you can use for this. There's flatfish, there's these mini wigglers, there's cut plugs, there's different things that actually get down and use this same sort of action and attract the same sort of bite. But what I love about these brads and what I love about the wigglers is that the fish hit them so incredibly hard. It's a vicious bite, it's a cannibalistic bite, and a lot of times it'll attract the bigger fish in the lake. 
The color of your plug really only matters on the water conditions that you're fishing. If it's very dark, very muddy water, very turbid, I'm gonna go with my super bright oranges and a lot of different bright fluorescent colors that these guys offer. In clear water conditions, I'm gonna go with less intrusive color patterns, something like these golds, the reds, and things that don't have quite as flashy of presentation. The rod selection that I'm gonna use for trolling this setup is the same as before, and the same I would use in any trout fishing situation. It's a seven and a half foot, four to 10 pound Okuma Salilo. Same reel, same line, same bumper, but with a little bit different setup at the end. All I've done here is I've tied in just a normal barrel swivel again from my 10 pound test, added a six pound leader all the way down about two and a half feet, and then tied it straight to my plug. Now you can see that I've taken the front hook off of this plug. And I've just found over time and after many heartbreaks reeling in fish, that having only one hook on the end of these things tends to work a lot better. But so far in my experience, taking that front hook off and just leaving that back treble has ended up landing me more fish. So let's go see how it works. All right, now the beauty of fishing in a place like this where we can have two rods out at the same time is that we can have two rods out at the same time. So while I'm doing this, I'm gonna take a little mini wiggler I'm gonna get it out there a little ways behind me. Now these things, you wanna to try to have a little ways away from the boat because having the distance behind you is what's gonna allow these things to get down and it's gonna keep it away from you so that the fish aren't being scared by the boat and then can actually come up, go around the boat and come back to your plug, see where it's at and then ultimately hit it and crank it down in the rock hole. So I'm gonna go about 50 feet behind me. I cast it about 20, I'm gonna go about 30, 40, there's 50 and in the rod hole, there we go. Got one already, got one. There it is, everybody. The double whammy worked. Oh yeah, there he is. Beautiful. Love it when a plan comes together. That's the beauty of having both those methods out behind you and working like that. Add a little bit of scent inside that KCP. And what do you know, we got our first fish of the day. Just a little guy, but he's ours. Look how little. All right, there he is. First fish of the day on the Dodger and the KCP. I love it. I'm gonna let him go. Later, little guy. All right, let's keep moving. All right, well, that did not take long at all, everybody. One thing that you should try to figure out when you get out onto the lake is identifying where the most fish are. An easy way to kind of find, and the nice part about trout fishing is they like to jump a lot. So when you hit the lake, be sure to start looking around, use your eyes, use your senses to try to find out where those fish are. I can see all along this main bank where a lot of the people are bank fishing is where a lot of the fish are starting to jump. So I'm gonna kind of keep my angle back at this bank, do these nice big circles, almost like figure eights back and forth along the lake and really try to kind of break down the lake into a mathematical pie chart. I don't want to just run around all nimbly bimbly. I want to try to direct myself and stay in the area that the fish are. So be sure to use your eyes, use your visual senses, see where the fish are and fish in that area. All right, well, it looks like today, I switched wigglers a couple times. The key is with the wigglers is to keep switching colors, keep switching sizes, and keep using that back and forth and that zigzag technique and that figure eight technique across the lake until you find the fish that are gonna be aggressive enough to take that wiggler. So with that being said, let's cut to a little beat down scene of a different episode where we smash fish on these wigglers. Oh, we got the buddy bite. It was a buddy bite. He's fighting. He's got a mind of his own. He's fighting good. Oh, it's a mind, he's got a mind of his own. He's giving a big fight for a little fish. Dude, he ain't that little. Put. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fish on. That's Wiggler. Oh, fish on. Big time. Oh, we got a double. Double. Oh, he just popped up. Oh, on the old Shelbourne special, man. Cute little dude. Send them back. Okay, last but not least, my very favorite method of all from fishing for my kayak, and that's with my fly rod. If you guys have watched many of our kayak trout fishing videos here on Dicka Fishing, you'll notice that this is my main method of, of choice when we're out here fishing out of our kayaks. Why that is, is because in lakes and stuff, in the spring, summer, and fall, the main diet of a lot of these fish are natural things like you can throw on a fly rod. My favorite style of fly rod for using out of my kayak is a five weight fly rod, a five weight fly reel, and your normal five weight floating fly line. 
you're wanting to learn how to go fly fishing and you're just starting in this sport, be sure to not break the bank on this adaption. Buying a higher quality rod is better than buying a higher quality reel because the rod is what's gonna help you learn how to cast the best. So keeping it within that 50 to two to $300 range is usually key for learning how to fly fish because you don't wanna go buy that cheapest Walmart special because you're not gonna have as much fun learning how to cast and it could be a little frustrating for you. So go a little higher price on your rod, get something that's a little better for you and that's gonna help you learn how to cast and don't worry about spending quite as much on the reel until you're ready to go out and really chase a lot of fish on the fly rod. My choice of flies for a situation like this in a lake is gonna be pretty simple. I go fairly simple on my colors, fairly simple on my styles. I have my woolly bugger patterns, I have my stone fly patterns, I have my leech patterns, and I have only a couple different colors of each. I, I either go with an olive or some sort of brown color, or I go with these black and black and shiny colors. And that seems to get the job done most places for me. All right, now let's go do some fly fishing. All right, everybody, I'm getting bored. We got a nice fish on the on the Dodger here and on the setup, but there's trout rolling everywhere and that makes me want to fly fish. So, so that kind of starts out my first tip if you're going to be fly fishing is you want to be able to see fish rolling around on the surface. Even though we're not going to be using dry flies in this instance and we're not going to be throwing things that are floating on the surface, I want to be able to identify where the fish are so that I'm not blindly fishing for them. So I'm going to put my Dodger away, grab my fly rod, and start casting. I'm going to go with something pretty natural. Normally I'd go with these big woolly buggers and some of these bigger patterns that I have here, but I think today I'm gonna go with something a little small and a little more natural here. And that is one of these little mini buggers. Okay, now here we go everybody. Now the beauty of this kayak here that I have today, again, it's the special and really awesome model of kayak. I have the spot lock technology where I can stay right in place where I see these fish that are rising and the, the activity in the lake that I wanna see. If you don't have the fortunality of having a kayak like this, one thing that you can do that I always recommend is read the wind in the lake. You wanna start at the upwind side and slowly drift with the current or that wind current that you have to kind of work whatever edge of the bank that you're seeing the most fish activity. So right now I'm seeing a lot of fish roll behind me and along the bank where a lot of these other people are fishing. So I'm gonna point my nose of my kayak into the wind, let that wind start pushing me back and start my fishing. If I'm sitting down the whole time, one of the best ways to fish is just to get your line out there the best you can, get it about 30 to 40 to 50 feet away from your boat, let that thing sink down, and then you can actually start using your kayak paddle or your feet paddles to start moving that fly. What I'm gonna do in this instance is I'm just gonna float with that wind current. I'm gonna turn my spot lock off now, and I'm gonna slowly start looking for fish. And this is why I love using the fly rod so much is it's almost like fishing with a video game. I'm gonna be seeing these rolls. I'm gonna be trying to hit these targets of these trout that are coming up to the surface and showing themselves. And that's how I'm gonna identify where my fish are and ultimately catch them in the long run. Another easy way to fish a fly setup like this or these flies that you've seen if you don't wanna use a fly rod is with one of our addicted trout fix floats. And you can get that on our website, addicted.fishing. You can find them at a lot of retailers across the country. But all you do is you just add your same leader below it like you would any other setup and then put this fly on the bottom end and fish it the same exact way as I'm about to show you right here. So if I'm casting my fly and I'm not just floating it with the current or paddling it behind me, one thing I wanna do is give that fly some life. I'm gonna give it time to sink down. I'm gonna let it get below the surface of the water and then I'm gonna start doing these little jerks, only about two to three feet at a time, but I want that fly to be jumping forward and then slowly sinking, and then jumping forward and slowly sinking. So I'm gonna give it that one, two, three. And if you're using a spinning reel, you're gonna give it that little rod tip movement, one, two, three, and reel each time so that that fly is moving and then falling again. And what's normally gonna happen is those fish are gonna to wanna to hit that fly on the fall as it naturally would be. So, so it's important to give that fly some life, give it some movement, and again, pay attention around you where the activity of the fish are, and then move to that area. Just absolutely destroyed it. Oh geez, he's coming at me. He's running at me. He's a wild animal. Oh geez, oh yeah, he's a head shaker. Oh yeah, he's a head shaker. Yeah, best one of the day. On the fly, who'd have thunk? Boy, that one really wanted it all the way down his gullet. There he is. All right, so the second method I'm gonna show you for fishing a fly is with the trolling method. And this is gonna work a lot better if you don't have any sort of propulsion to your kayak other than your hands. If you're gonna be rowing or paddling your kayak with your hands, this method will almost work the best, and this is how we do it. 
So I'm gonna set my kayak at a nice slow troll. Luckily again, I have this iPilot set up in this Minn Kota on the front of this kayak so that I'm able to actually move and be hands-free and fish this rod. But what I'm gonna do is once I get my line back there, I'm gonna have about 40 to 50 to 60 feet of line back behind me. I'm gonna hold my rod tip or just set it in the side of the kayak next to me. But one important thing to do as you're doing this is not just slowly troll that fly, but again, give it a little bit of life. As I'm going along here, I'm just gonna give it these little tiny jerks, either with your rod tip or you can use the line itself and move that fly up and down every, every four or five seconds or so as you're trolling along through the area you see the fish and then ultimately wait for that fish to come destroy your fly back there behind the boat. Oh, there's a fish, got him, got him, got him. Oh, it worked, it worked perfectly, yeah. See a little bit of action, a little bit of movement and a little bit of speed moving with that wind current. We were, I didn't even have my motor on at that point. Works every time. Oh yeah, beautiful little trout. Come on over, buddy. Give him a little kiss, little. Cute little fly in the side of his mouth. And another fish on another method. Now you guys can see why this is one of my favorite methods to fish from the kayaks, because it's super interactive, it's super fun, and even catching those small fish like that can be a blast. And it goes without being said how exciting it is to catch big fish on it. All right, everybody, one thing I do wanna say is that every single method that you guys like to fish for trout works well from a kayak. The beauty of having a kayak is to be able to get away from the bank, get to areas in the lake that hold fish, and actually go and target the fish that you're seeing out there on the body of water. And it helps you learn a lot about the body of waters that you get to go fish. So if you have a kayak and you like to fish, don't hesitate to hop in that bad boy, get out on the water and go have some fun. You guys, thank you so much for watching another Addicted video. I hope you guys liked that tutorial on Jordan on how to kayak fish. Really, really informative, and I'm so glad that he made that one. I know there's a lot of kayak fishermen out there or people that are interested in getting into it, so thank you so much for watching. We don't say it enough, but we appreciate all you addicts so much for the support and what we've been able to accomplish with this brand. None of it at all would be possible without you guys as followers just continuing to support us. So with that being said, this Sunday, July 25th, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Fourth of July mini drop is coming to you. Don't forget, mark your calendars, and we'll see you guys on the river. You guys, thank you so much for watching another addicted video. We don't, we, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, fourth of, fourth of July mini drop, July 25th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard, oh my God. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna hear that. <laughs> you ready?